Hi guys, um, today we're going to learn about watercolors, um, a few things about different kinds of watercolors, how to use them, how to use your brush with watercolors, what paper to use, how much water to use, lots of things. Um, so we're just going to go over all of that so that you have better understanding of how to use medium when we use it in class. Um, so first of all, I usually have two different kinds of watercolors on hand. I don't use liquid watercolors with um, students. That is something that you could use on your own. They're really fun. Um, works a lot of the same as a, as a solid watercolor, um, but um, they're just a little bit better. Um, we use the class packs most of the time. Um, you'll notice that when you open them up, it's just the plastic tray filled with the solid watercolors um, and usually comes with a brush. These brushes are not the best. Um, we will use them sometimes for um, practicing things or things where details are not super important, um, but they're not really that great. So I usually give you a better watercolor brush, something more along the lines of this. Um, we also tend to use the individual little watercolors that look like this. Um, I like these because I can give them to you in certain color families. Um, if we're using only warm colors or if we're using only cool colors, I can give you just those colors to make sure that you're not using the ones that you're not supposed to. Um, I also really don't like how these ones have black. Um, black tends to not really help your watercolor. Um, especially if you don't really know how to use them super well. Um, so my advice to students is to stay away from using black watercolor for now until you've practiced and you have a little bit better um, brush control. So um, let's get started. So first of all, watercolors start out um, dry. So whenever we're using them, they're always dry. You could touch them and not get any paint on your finger. Um, that's because watercolors need water to work, okay? So, um, I will always be giving you a water cup full, not full, but, you know, with some water in it. If we fill the water cup way too high up here, usually we end up with spills. We don't like spills in here. Um, so, if you ever fill up a water cup, just make sure not to fill it further than halfway up, all right? Um, so... Um, basically, what you need to make sure when you're using watercolors is that your brush is always clean, first of all. So make sure that when you're washing your brush, you're actually rubbing the bottom of the cup. Um, that really helps to help clean the brush. You should also have a uh, paper towel on hand in order to wipe your brush off. I don't have one right now. But basically, wash the brush and then wipe it onto your paper towel to get off any excess color. Um, the reason for that is because you don't want to be mixing colors when you're actually dipping your brush into the watercolor. You can mix colors on your paper, that's totally fine, but um, you don't want to, you know, use the purple and then automatically go into the blue and use the blue to mix a purplish blue. You want to do that on your paper instead. Um, the other thing to know before I start going into demonstrations is that the more water you use, the lighter your color will be. So um, if you wanted to make your red more of a pink, use more water. Get more water on your brush, get more water into the watercolor, and then um, it'll become a pink. If you want your blue to be a lighter blue, use more water. If you want your blue to be a darker blue, make sure that there isn't that much water on your brush. You still need water because it will not work if you don't have water on your brush. Um, one last thing is that I see a lot of kids that have not used watercolors before really pushing their brush into the watercolors. You don't want to do that because watercolors are super delicate um, and you don't need to even push down on them to get the, the, the color onto your brush. So you can see that I used the purple a little bit to show that last demonstration. So I'm just kind of wiping at it with my brush. I'm not pushing really hard down. If you push really hard down, you're going to ruin the watercolor. Um, so just lightly, just like push your brush in, rub it around, and then you'll get that color onto your brush. Um, I'll do like a little swipe right now, show you how much color we got. So we've got a good amount of color on there and I didn't push down at all. So first thing, water on your brush, Second thing, don't push down. A light tap onto the palette will be just enough. 
Um, and then um, very, very, very last thing before I do any demonstrations with the brush and the paper. Um, if I give you these kinds of loose watercolors on this kind of tray, um, please leave them on the tray. Don't take them off and bring them to you and your little spot at your table because then that's just gonna get paint and water and just stuff from all of this onto the table instead of onto the tray. We don't wanna have a giant cleanup at the end of class so make sure that these watercolors stay on the tray and you bring your body to the tray, not the tray to you, okay? Um, and it will just help in the long run and it'll make things go way faster at the end of the, the class period when we clean. Um, and that's all I have for now. We'll go into some demonstrations now. All right, let's see how this works. First, I'm going to be doing a wash. It's where you add water to your paper and then add the pigment of the color. It's great for large areas like skies and fields. Just be careful not to put too much water on your paper or you could rip it. Next, I'm going to be doing some blending. Blending is where you mix colors to create a new color. I like to use two colors who are next to each other on the color wheel. Here, I'm using purple and blue and green and blue. Make sure to mix the colors on your paper and not in the actual watercolors. Next, I'm going to be showing you how to use brush pressure to make different kinds of lines. If you put less pressure on your brush and use the tip of your brush, you can get a smaller, thinner, finer line. If you put more pressure on your brush and flatten it out a bit more, you'll get a bolder, thicker line. When using watercolors, the more water you use, the lighter your color will be. The less water you use, the darker your color will be. Next, I'm going to show you how a resist works. Um, you're basically using crayons, which are made out of wax to draw out your picture and then you're going to watercolor over it. Whatever watercolor you put over your crayon will just run right over it and you'll still be able to see your drawing. Here I'm going to fill in this flower. Um, right now I'm filling in the petals. If you go over the petal just like I did on, on the top one, you'll still be able to see the outline of the petal because of the wax of the crayon. This also works with oil pastels. Resists are a great thing to use with things like snowflakes and stars. Little white details that normally wouldn't really be great to do with watercolor. The next technique I'm going to show you is a chemical reaction between the watercolor and salt. Um, basically, if you have a nice watery watercolor on your paper, dabbing a little bit of salt on top is going to make a nice reaction where the salt absorbs the water. Once it's dry, you'll see what it looks like. Um, right here, I'm going to show you how to use markers with watercolor. Permanent markers are the way to go. Washable markers, on the other hand, will bleed with your watercolor and turn your color into a gross mess. Um, so if you're ever going to use markers, use permanent markers. All right, now here are the fin final results. We've got blending, make sure not to use too much water to rip your paper. We've got brush pressure and resists. Here's a better look at the resist with the white crayon, and here's a dried version of the salt.